probably <laughs> took like 12 years off of my lifespan at Oxford. Um, one through 10, yeah. just like overall experience. One, two, three. 10. Ten. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot to say about that. You didn't tell us where to look. <laughs> at the cam, bro. You look, this is cute. <laughs> the channel today's video is going to be more about the social aspect of studying abroad at oxford university as an american i did a video on the application process but this is the juicy video about all the things everybody wants to know that nobody asked for these are my two best friends from abroad this is emma this is ramisa <laughs> Now that I can, I suddenly want. I Oxford is split up into a bunch of different colleges. I took some tutorials and classes at other colleges. These colleges are all like within the university and they'll like pair you up with different tutors elsewhere if, they, if you don't have your program at that college. So you have, at least in our case, two tutorials that you go to each week. And tutorials are a one-on-one, -on -one, mano e mano interview essentially with your instructor. And um, you present a piece of work uh, that you filled out for the past week. It's usually 15 to 2,000 words on a question prompt and you uh, discuss and debate your answer to this question that they gave. And you're doing most of this work on your own. You can ask questions throughout the week if you have them, but you're working off a reading list that your instructor gave you to answer that question prompt. So you're doing all this independent work and then just going mano y mano, mm -hmm. head to head to defend your answer. It is a lot different from the US system just because in the US system you go to class and you learn and then you're tested on the stuff that you learn. But there, it's more of like you are given books and prompts and you read those and then you go in and discuss. So it's kind of like backwards, like a flipped classroom even. But um, it, it was really difficult for like both of us, I think. It was, it was really like academically like taxing and it took a lot of time and we would stay up all night a lot we of were, the time. We were roommates in the same room and yeah. there were nights where she had an assignment due the next day and the light would be on all night. Yeah. And then the next night, she would not have anything the next day, but I'd have an assignment, yeah. light would be on all night. And we our, wrapped up the We wrapped up, bill. yeah, <laughs> oh my God. that room. They told us at the end of the year that it's the highest it's ever been. And David, That's the worst year was like, there was, there's no way that this, <laughs> like, the bill is right. He was like, check. he told the company that no way this bill is right. And then they looked at it again and they saw that it was. <laughs> so it was a lot more academically challenging than we were used to in the States. Um, but I found the system more rewarding um, for the same mm -hmm. reasons that it was challenging. Um, exactly, doing, yeah, uh, definitely. Doing so much more independent work, all of your strides are made by yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely got a lot more out of my education um, doing it all by myself. Yeah. yeah, and there's like nowhere to hide in class. If you show up unprepared, it's really obvious. So you like have to be prepared all the time. Mm -hmm. And obviously if you say something wrong, they're not gonna be hard on you, but it's like you, you do have to be prepared and you have to come in with the material read and you have to be ready to go. Well, just speaking from my experience, there were times, a lot of times where I didn't thoroughly read enough and it, it was doable, but you don't get as much out of it. You don't exactly, make those yeah. you know, strides that are so rewarding if you don't do the work. They give you what's called a tutorial report at the end, and ours were converted to the um, US grading system, but sometimes they're not. So they'll give you a number and it converts to letter grades. So for example, it, it's a lot different from in the US. So a 70 and up, I think is an A. And even actually, I, I think I got a 68 that was an A. And so that's kind of how the grading system works. So anything between like 40 and 50, I think is like an average. And so like a 50 is like around a B grade level. And so they take that number and then they convert it into the US grading system. 
but if they weren't to convert it, then it would be in a system that goes one, two and two one and then like a third one thing i really valued about the tutorial reports is that you get a full like write up from the instructor it's like reading like a recommendation letter and also kind of getting a sense for how much this instructor liked you it was really great that after eight weeks of just torment you know seeing that uh you actually did all right was really nice yeah there was a lot of times where we all of us thought that we were like doing mm -hmm. really bad but like we were <laughs> just it was just like we were just really worried but we ended up all being fine so they have what they call box which are like <laughs> oxford parties with all like oxford students and they happen at the colleges and they're actually funded by like the university mm -hmm. but um each college a lot of the colleges actually probably not all of them because ours didn't have bars and inside the college bar is where the bobs happen and so what were some of the themes we had an abba theme and then there was like a 90s theme yeah. or 70s um there was a, a 20s theme that i saw at the 90s theme a <laughs> uh, sexy sub fusk is yeah, the yeah, first yeah, bop there, of the year one, yeah The bops are really fun everyone like you can bring guests obviously but there's there it's like primarily students and um there's like drinks served by the colleges and you're like around a lot of people you know if it's your own college each college has kind of a different uh, gradation of how lit the party is yeah. Lineker, that's that's a massive bop yeah then you get pembroke on b flame that one's a little bit more lit their mcr as they call it has a little bar and then a little room and so their bops can tend to be like game nights or dancing nights and then yeah. you have like the seminary that we stayed at and have <laughs> wine night with a bunch yeah. of priests all colleges are really different there's like different levels of like what goes on and different levels of like as she said litness so that's just something you have to watch out for so you, if you want to go to like other colleges bops that's definitely something you should totally do and that's what yeah. we did so to get into off-campus partying me and emma went out to a lot of clubs there were some that were our favorites some that we didn't like there's like a level of different clubs in Oxford and it, if you go out there you can see that and a lot of them are close together so sometimes we would walk to one and then walk to others and like lots of groups of people did the same like usually in the US I went out Thursday Friday Saturday but in Oxford we went out almost every Monday night mm -hmm. <laughs> because there was an event called broke Mondays at one of the clubs and we loved going to that they had one pound drinks mm -hmm. like one pound shots and like one pound drinks and one and pound, pound entry and one pound entry so we loved that. It was always a mess, but it was fun. And here's the thing about clubs in Oxford. Uh, a lot of them are not Oxford University students. They're Oxford Brooks students. Yeah, which is another university that's like nearby. We had a lot of fun going out. That was like, we, I don't know how we did it, but we went out a lot and um, we would get some like Tesco vodka and <laughs> drink it like yeah. for pregame. Okay, so here is the, um, here's the whole video. $5 bottle of Tesco vodka and then go get the um, black currant mixer um, from downstairs. That's all you got to do. So yeah, Purple Turtle was the highlight, but then it closed down. I don't know when it's going to open back up. It was an alternative club uh, with alter alternative music. Oh, that was so fun. We went, we all three of us went there together the first night we were in Oxford. And, it was and then Plush replaced it and Plush is a gay bar, gay club. It's really cool. Go there if you like poppers. Um, and then there's Fever, and Fever is a very University of Oxford-esque place. A lot of um, students go there. A lot of freshies, a lot of students. Our favorite was Attic, A-T-I-K. It's um, very U.S.-ish. Like, yeah. if you're homesick, you're gonna go to Attic. And it's, it's pretty lit. They have three dance floors. And they're right across from there is Thirst. Thirst is a little bit smaller. Don't go to Kiss. That's a lot of old people. Yeah, there's Bridge. a lot of freshmen too. A lot of freshmen. Yeah. Um, and then Hanks is an upscale bar that Remisa hates, but I, <laughs> I like it a lot. So you will see a lot of freshmen out at the bars just because they're allowed to drink more than in the U.S. We have a lot of <laughs> crazy dating <laughs> stories. So many of them. We, when we went to Oxford, we were roommates and we were both kind of fresh out of relationships. Well, I was still in a relationship during the entire first term. Right, but and the then, first term doesn't count. We didn't do anything the first term. Nobody did So like no one term. did anything the first term. The second term, that's when I like got out of a long-term relationship and we like popped out. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Both of us went on dates with guys and those- Lots of dates. 
those ranged from like mildly crazy to like really crazy. <laughs> so there is a, a lot of interesting personalities at Oxford. So that is to say the least. Speaking from the uh, perspective of having done everything wrong um, in dating while at Oxford, uh, I took a few <laughs> leaves out of Burmese's book. If you're gonna be on Bumble, only go for University of Oxford guys. Only go for uh, guys in your age range, typically. Don't <laughs> date the PhD students um, if you're not a PhD student. And uh, generally just find people outside of dating apps because that's going to be a lot yeah. better to gauge who they are before you go out on dates. Um, because <laughs> Oxford has a lot of weird people and they have a lot of cool people totally like yeah. any school so don't go on bubble dates without being able to gauge you know who you're talking to i think that yeah definitely be careful when you're dating i, I went out with some interesting guys it was a lot of fun just because i got to hear about people's like every everyone at oxford has like their thing it's weird mm -hmm. it's like they're really good at something and they would like talk about that and it was really nice like one of the guys was like a geologist and then oh, yeah there was like a engineering like math guy and like just like it's cool to hear about people's like stories but then like it was mostly like oh that guy was cool I don't think there's gonna be another date on making friends well we three are all still friends it's been over a year since we left Oxford friends you make definitely last a lot of the people we lived with we're still friends with we were all really close as a friend group in the program that we were in and what's really interesting is that a lot of us were americans and so we all became close just because we were all abroad students we didn't make at least i personally didn't make a ton of friends with like british students just because it was like a little bit harder to make friends with british students we were also in a really small program and since we had these one-on-one -on -one tutorials the only place we could really meet other british students was like out or like at parties or at lectures, which like not a ton of people like talk to each other. Because we were in such a small program, it was kind of hard to make friends with British students. There are tons of like events and like different activities you can do. Like I was considering playing lacrosse and things like that. There's like a club for everything. So if you do want to set out with like making friends or if you don't like the people in your program and you want to make other friends, that's definitely, definitely doable. Definitely doable. Um, and at the beginning of the year, you'll have the club Fair, yeah, the Freshers' Fair. Freshers' Fair. So definitely take advantage of the Freshers' Fair. And even if you aren't able to do programs and activities that you want to in the first term, just pick it up in the second term. Exactly, yeah. Once you get used to things, mm -hmm. there's always time to start something new. Don't be afraid to yeah, try new things after you get acclimatized because it will take a minute. Yeah. Speaking of making friends with British students, this is what I've heard from people even you know, studying in London you're just going to gravitate more naturally towards American students. You know, even though we speak the same language, there is a cultural barrier that you're not anticipating. And it spans, you know, childhood experiences, TV shows, jokes, humor. It's easy to make friends with American students. It's a lot of fun when you're making friends with American students in the UK. Yeah, it is. <laughs> While we were studying abroad, our program didn't allow us to travel during the term, which honestly makes sense because the workload was so so insane that like if we were traveling it would be impossible to do mm -hmm. and so we did get to travel during our breaks though which we had really long breaks we had two breaks that were six weeks long and we traveled all three of us traveled together for the first one and then during the second one me and margaret traveled together for a little bit of it the three of us together we went to italy so we went to rome mm -hmm. And then me and Margaret went to Florence, and then I went to Bologna, and then we all went to Germany. We went to Munich, and then um, mm -hmm. Berlin, and to the Czech Republic. And then for the next trip, me and Margaret went to Greece. We went to Athens and Santorini. I would definitely recommend going to Germany in uh, December. Really, really nice out there in the wintertime. And you'll also find that once you're there, traveling is a lot cheaper than it is here. Um, the United States is way bigger than you know Europe, all of Europe. Ryanair prices are low. You'll be able to travel to Italy for like $75. Yeah, so it's like really cheap to travel. It's nice to have people to travel with. Yeah, and also you can take buses pretty much anywhere. It's totally, yeah. And those are way cheaper. I mean, you're gonna, you know, maybe be on a bus for 12 hours and you don't wanna do that during coronavirus, but you know. <laughs> okay, so overall wrap up. Thank you for watching. Leave comments below if you have questions, leave video requests, DM us on Instagram at MJD and NYC.
Yeah, so we just started a Etsy shop and it's like products that I make, so handmade items and it's mostly crochet stuff, but I just started doing some jewelry and then Emma helps me run the shop, so make sure you guys check that out. We have an Instagram page and a Facebook shop. Bad Witch Stitch. Yes, it is. it'll be linked below. It's really lovely Aww. meeting you all, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye! Bye! Subscribe. <laughs> yeah. Done. Yeah.